The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm your host, Patrick Cristiano, the publisher of TheaterArts.com, a website covering Broadway and off-Broadway theater and all things theater. And today we have a special event. I'm doing a virtual uh, show with three other people that are working on a very interesting project right now with a 68-cent crew theater. Uh, my friend Isa Goldberg, Isa, welcome, Isa. <laughs> Isa. Nice to see you. Is my friend. She, she's a she's a contributor to our website. She's one of the very first contributors to TheaterLife.com. Uh, she's also a former president of the Drama Desk, a member uh, organization that I'm a member of, and uh, she has recently turned to acting. So tell us a little bit about how that journey has been for you. Now, uh, you. have come into some interesting projects and now you're right in the midst of uh, working with the 68 cent crew theater is that correct that's 68 correct cent crew theater uh, which Ronnie of uh, which your, your friend Ronnie Marmano let me introduce a, a, another one you're the artistic director an actor a producer uh, that has tons of credits uh, in LA uh, and films and television uh, welcome Ronnie thank, thank you for coming to do this Maybe you guys are right in the midst of a festival that's running from August 18th to September 22nd, uh, which you usually do live. But now with the pandemic, you've been forced to take on a different mode. Uh, and uh, let's bring in, before we get to talk to you, let, let's bring in Megan too. Uh, mm -hmm. Megan McGee is the communi communications director of your company, and you must have a lot to do on your plate at the moment because you're an actress and you're a director and you're participating in all these shows that they're doing. Uh, so, 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 Franny, let's start with you. I mean, <laughs> you have a storied history. Uh, you've done, oh my God, so many things. You've been on General Hospital, uh, films for Love and Money, Pizza with Bullets. I mean, they're all very interesting titles, but probably the most interesting thing you've ever done was the, the Lenny Bruce show that you wrote yourself. Yeah, I mean, interesting is a big word, but it's certainly probably one of the most important things I've done for myself uh, is the Lenny Bruce show. We ran for 100 performances off Broadway, and now we're in Chicago. Well, now I'm in my living room in Los Angeles because of the pandemic, but we were in Chicago, and we will be back in Chicago. So, uh, yeah, I love, I love the Lenny Bruce show, for sure. It's been, I mean, that, 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 that's a one-person show that you wrote. Yes, I wrote it. Uh, one person show directed by the Tony winning and great actor and man Joe Montaigne, uh, which I'm very proud of. And Joe directed it. And we, we've done 305 performances now between Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago. So it's, it's a lot of time to do a 90 minute monologue. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of heavy yeah. lifting. So and I'm just having fun. Yeah. Before we get to the, what, what you guys are doing right now with, with your festival, uh, which tell them where they can see it, how they can see it. Uh, this festival of yours is going on, and it's on every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. Is that correct? Yeah, essentially, uh, you go to our YouTube channel. I think it's Theater 68. When Megan speaks, she could speak a, a little more uh, thoroughly on that. But yeah. it's our YouTube channel, and every night at 8 o'clock New York time, uh, you'll see a 10-minute play, 10 to 15 minutes, a one-act play. And on Fridays, you'll see two plays, 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And so there's a there's a play every day. The only day we're dark is Monday nights. Uh, so we do two on Friday and one every single day of the week. So. Now, now, Megan, is this the same routine every week? So if you miss it, like one Tuesday, you can catch it the following Tuesday? So yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct. So if you were wanting to tune into the show on Tuesday night and you missed it, it's... Um, so sorry, you can tune in right again the next Tuesday at eight o'clock and you see the same performance, but it's not pre-recorded. It's performed live again. So you get a unique experience of the same play by watching it multiple times. So, 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 so 
Ronnie, how was this? I mean, have you done anything like this where you had to be virtual with your performers? Where you, did you act in any of these two that they're doing, by the way? No, no, I, I directed the one on Saturday night that Megan is starring, and I'm very lucky. Uh, Tell to us about it. it. Tell us about it. It's called The Hooking Place, written by Annie Lanzalato, a nice New York, a wonderful woman, and a great writer, you know, and so, you know, she wrote a beautiful play, and essentially, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. Of course, we've done this writing assignment in Los Angeles for 19 straight years, and the LA, and the New York company, nine years. So we had written these plays right before, uh, the, you know, the the quarantine happened. Right. And we were about to go into a rehearsal, and then we had to shut down. But instead of waiting to this, you know, for this unknown time uh, when we can come back to work, I said, well, why don't we create a virtual stage, and why don't we, why don't we still perform and inspire our members and let people know you could still do theater? Uh, it's not traditional, but uh, who knows? Maybe it's the start of something new. And so we decided I, to do that. Yeah. How does it feel, guys? Megan, how does it feel with the, the virtual theater? I mean, uh, is it, is, I mean, are you adapting to it? I mean, what what are some of the challenges? I mean, and, and since you get to do it again the next week, it's like you, if you see things that you didn't like, you can try it something new again all over. It must oh, be yeah, that's definitely happening to it. It feels, there's so many feelings. Proud is a major one just because it's been such hard work uh, in more ways than we anticipated, let alone actually getting back into rehearsals again, which a lot of us were not doing for a really long time. We were, some people are doing readings where they're reading off their phone and, or it's um, a cold reading we're seeing a lot of, but not many people have been rehearsing plays multiple times a week to get off book and rehearse blocking mm -hmm. and do exercises. So that's really fulfilling. It feels very fulfilling and I'm definitely very proud, but it is also overwhelming. Um, and there have been a lot of challenges on the tech side in particular, that yeah. even though we knew it was going to be difficult, we did not anticipate the many places we need hands. We need someone manning the YouTube. We need someone tech directing the Zoom. We need someone doing the sound. We need someone getting the questions from the YouTube chat over to Zoom so that we can host the Q&A after. Uh, Annie Lanzalato, I think, said it best. She's like, I feel like I'm doing a rocket launch. It's the every night. It's a lot of moving pieces. <laughs> Yeah. You kind of are, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, it, it's amazing, but I think what I'm finding is the audience is so excited to just be on the journey that they forgive the imperfections. I think I think it feels like, wow, this is awesome. Let's all be a part of it. So if the Wi-Fi is shaky in one second or something's happening, I think the audience is just thrilled we're doing it. And so there, it, you know, an audience can be forgiving if, especially something new like this. So yeah. I think, right. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It almost gives you the feel that, well, like when they first started doing television plays on television. Remember way back when, uh, they were creaky. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't perfect like that. There, there wasn't the slickness that we have come to appreciate and know. Well, I hope. I hope what's not happening is, you know, when television came along, radio kind of took a back seat. So I'm hoping we could get back to our actual stage and not the virtual stage. Let's hope the history doesn't repeat itself in that way. But, but uh, for now, we're making, uh, you know, lemonade out of lemons. And uh, we're proud that we get to work. And hopefully we're inspiring other people to do the same thing. I, so I, I do want to tell us, how, is it, how has it been? You, you met up with this company a couple of years ago. Is that what you told me, I think? Yes, about a year and a half ago. And I really, to be candid, didn't know a lot about Theater 68 when I walked into my audition. But I do really very vividly recall meeting Ronnie there and Megan and another person who's still a member of our company, whose name is Jade. And uh, I was really happy to, to get to work with a group of people that was you know, fairly consistent and regular. So I got to know people. And then when I went into quarantine when we all went into quarantine. I, I felt like this was a real life jacket for me. I could see people uh, and be with people, at least virtu you know, in this virtual format, um, so that the dialogue could keep going. So I had interactions with others, which I was desperately missing. And um, it's, it's been a very, a very wonderful opportunity for me to stretch and grow and learn. So yeah, I'm thrilled. And you, you worked on a piece that, that was just shown Sunday, uh, Fear and Self-Loathing, uh, about uh, Hunter Thompson. Uh, and, and Megan, you directed it. Uh, yeah. Tell us about how, what this was like and what that, give, give, give us a, tell our viewers 
what what the what that was. What you want to start, Isa? Sure. Well, um, spirit and loathing in the creative process obviously is a takeoff on a variety of Hunter Thompson's articles. There's fear and loathing on the campaign trail and fear and loathing in Vegas, which people may recognize as a movie with Johnny Depp. An extraordinary mm -hmm. acting job that he does as Hunter S. Thompson is well worth seeing. But be that as it may, it's a first time writing um, a play by Christian Ledley who, who wrote it. And it's an extraordinarily strong piece, especially for a first time writer, um, which makes it great to work on. Um, the actor who plays Hunter S. Thompson is a dynamo. Um, and a man with a great many acting credits to boast of as well, um, but he's he's fantastic as Hunter S. Thompson and uh, volatile in a way that we can remember Hunter S. Thompson to be. And it's just it's a fun piece. I love doing it. Uh, the fact that I get to repeat it and also get to see uh, the work that I did in a performance is a, a wonderful way to learn and see yourself in action. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. So, so Ronnie, how did all of this begin? Like you, you, I, what, what I find really fascinating that you kept going to the theater as a child and didn't audition and didn't audition. And then all of a sudden, because you decided, okay, I'm going to try it. Well, are you talking about the company or my personal? Your personal experience. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you, I was you, a teenager. You, you held back is what I'm saying. What, what, was, what, what pushed you? What finally said, okay, I've got to do it now. You know what? Not to get dramatic about it, but you asked. So my mother uh, passed away, a young woman. She was 53 and I was 23. Oh. And it was her and I used to go see plays together. And I was always so mesmerized. I mean, I didn't start acting until I was 23, but I was always so mesmerized with like, I couldn't believe that actors would stand in front of people and tell this story. I couldn't, I couldn't believe this was happening. And she would always say, oh, look, you're beaming. You should try and say, no, Ma, I don't know. I, I don't think I can do it. Well, when she passed away, I was like, what am I waiting for? So I called this guy who we used to go support in the local theater. And I asked him- you know, uh, I'm really curious about Ryan, excuse me for interrupting, but were you aware that you really wanted to do it and weren't expressing it or did that did you know you really wanted to do this and were afraid to do it what well i that? knew that i was an artist but i couldn't label it because as a teenager i was hanging out with the wrong kids on the streets of new jersey and uh -huh. so but what i would do is while they went out and you know did whatever they did i would go home and write poetry after a long night with them mm -hmm. and i didn't know like i had this artist in me but i didn't understand what it was i couldn't label it and so i was always the guy who thought there was something else i would look in magazines at pictures of california as a teenager thinking it's so far away but look at the palm trees maybe someday i'll get to see you know and so i was always a dreamer but i didn't know how to label it and then you know, eventually I called that guy who my mom and I would see all the time. And I thought he was the best actor in the world. Meanwhile, I, as I learned how to act, I realized he wasn't, but uh, <laughs> he, got, he got the lead in every role. And I was, right, right. I was so in awe of this guy. And I didn't know how to call it an audition. So I called it a tryout because I like sports. So I would say, hey, next time there's a tryout, can you invite me? I'd like to try out for the play. And so he invited me to the tryout and, uh, and, I, and I got cast. And I remember, I couldn't believe they said yes. Bill Cecilberg in Edison, New Jersey gave me my first yes. And I'll never forget that. And he's still my friend. And and so I was like, the whole process, I didn't know what stage left. Your what. mother had already passed away at that point? Yeah, she passed Did away. Did she get to see you do anything? No, she passed away in March and I auditioned in the fall of that same year in 95. And I, and I had the thing, the lightning bolt hit me. I walked out on stage opening night and I was like, oh no, I just found what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life. No matter, no matter what it looks like, no matter if they give me money or not, I'm in, I'm in. Cause I didn't know what to do. And so, so that, that was my experience. And that was a very small part of the story, but that's how it started. And then all of a sudden, you know, next thing I know I'm, I'm making a living, thank God. So, you know. yeah, and I, I love the way the title of your company, the, the name of your company came from the 68 set because it was a story that after you went to Hollywood, you, you went to Hollywood, you packed up and, and drove off and you reached a point where you only had 68 cents in your checking account. That's right. I, I had booked uh, Tony and Tina's wedding, the national tour. Well, first I was in Philly for nine months. It was my first acting job, $35 a show. I couldn't believe they were paying me to do it. And then I got the national tour and they gave me $800 to act a week. I could not believe it. 
I was like, I'll do it for nothing. No, 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 $800. So I, I'm on tour and then I end up in LA and you know, I didn't go to work right away. One day I woke up and I had 68 cents left. And I turned to my friend, Tommy Calavito. I said, Tommy, I have 68 cents. What, what should I do? He goes, sounds like you need to get a job. And I, uh, <laughs> I go, yeah, I guess so. I go instead, why don't we start a theater company? And he's like, what are you crazy? And I was like, yeah, I'm a little crazy. And the idea, it grew into something way beyond my imagination. What I thought was gonna happen is we'd get some actors together on Monday nights. We'd hold each other accountable. We do scene work, we'd help each other because we couldn't afford class. That's how this whole thing actually started. And then after a year of being together, we're like, hey, let's do a show, let's, let's put on a play. And then the title of my company, how it happened was, Polly Warfield was a great reviewer for the Backstage West for 50 years, I don't know. And one day she wanted to do an interview about our company and she said, what's the name of your company? And I didn't know. And I went, literally, I was like, uh, 68 cent crew, theater company and she put it in print and I go, I guess that's our name guys. And, <laughs> and, and that was then, organic. <laughs> it became theater 68 because it's a little less of a mouthful. But, uh, but uh, you know, to me, it's still 68 and crew. But. It, it, that, that, that's cool. That's very cool. So, but uh, you also, but didn't you also kind of simultaneously get a, 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 big, a good part at the same time that you launched your... Yeah. That they kind of I booked a big uh, MGM film called Deuces Wild. I had one of the main guys. And, uh, and so I always say 68 cents was what I was willing to have or not have to continue to pursue what I wanted to do. Um, and quite honestly, during that process, I was so excited. Scorsese produced it. All these big stars were in it. I had a great role. And a week into the shoot, I, it's a true story, I looked in the mirror in my, in, my, uh, I looked in, in my dressing room. I looked in the mirror and I said to myself, what are you doing here? I thought I left you back east. And then I realized a, bit, a valuable lesson, and that was like, I'm still not happy with the thing I thought would make me happy. And I realized in that moment that I needed a community of actors. And that's how the company started was oh. because I was very much, I had everything in Hollywood that I thought I wanted, and I was still with me and I went, oh no, what am I gonna do? And so I realized I needed like-minded people on a daily mm -hmm. basis, you know? Well, you also, it was, it was also passing plant playing it forward too in a way at the same uh, time. I mean, is it, your story always has an interesting duality to it. Like, you know, when you're out with your friends in Brooklyn and going home and writing poetry, but this that duality kind of plays out in everything. Be like, you got 68 cents, but you're starting a theater company. It's like- My life know, story, that is my whole- yeah, right, thing. it is cool. And then uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're throwing a theater festival. So it kind of <laughs> comes full circle. Like, oh, <laughs> pandemic, who cares? Let's, let's do theater, guys. Let's do it anyway. Yeah, so it's great. Yeah, it's and I had um, I had a teacher, a favorite teacher of mine, who always said, "Be afraid, do it anyway." And I think um, this company also holds that value, and I really love it. <laughs> yeah, if you're not afraid, it's not important. You have to be afraid. You have to have fear for it to be valuable and important to you. If you don't have that, it's it doesn't mean much. So, so Ronnie, you wrote uh, a, a piece now that you for this festival. What was what's your piece called? No, I didn't write one. What I did was oh, I you directed one. I'm sorry. I yes, directed one. But essentially, I looked in and, and signed off on all seven of them before we went into production. Um, but you know, I, I'm very excited about this because you know the actors are. It very it feels very much like theater. You know, it, at places every night we're all pacing around our individual living rooms. <laughs> just like you would be backstage, the stress, and, and the idea that we're trying to capture that people are in the same location, that's part of our design, even though they're very much far apart. Yeah. I think it's such a cool thing, and we decided not to charge for tickets because we thought, well, let's, let's just make it a fundraising festival because we're still paying the rent out here in our theater in LA and other expenses. So we decided, let's just make it a fundraising festival. It's free, come, and if you're inspired to donate, please do. If not, we still want you to come and see the, the work. And uh, we're, tonight is the kickoff of our third week. So you have four more chances to see every show uh, still. I'm not sure when this will air, but. One more time, tell them, Megan, where they, uh, how they sh watch your shows. Yes. Go to YouTube. So, um, yeah, you want to visit our YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash 68 cent crew theater, theater spelled with an R-E. And there, there are pre-made live links for each performance made on Tuesdays. So you'll just choose the one that you, that is associated with that night. So tonight you would go to our YouTube channel and click on Doom to Live and it'll set, you can even set a reminder 
to send you an email and say, hey, yes. 8 o'clock, I have a commitment tonight. I have a reservation at the, at the theater. Um, and then you the orchestra the process. Of your yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, but it's, it's okay. Thing. We, and then we you get in the box office, and even if you get there early before 8 o'clock, we have a box office attendee who's um, your host for the evening, and they're starting conversation, asking questions about, you know, where are you tuning in from, or who do you know in the show? So it really is like being in the lobby of the theater. Mm -hmm. And then when the Zoom comes up, I was like, oh, we're starting. Here we go. It's like lights down. It's, it really is, like Ronnie said, it feels like as close as we can get to live theater in this time. Yeah. Yeah, this seems like a perfect moment. Let's let Riley, let's show the video. We have a promo for for your uh, festival. What does Theater Sixty Eight mean to me? Well, listen. Sixty Eight means second family, a second home. I haven't felt like I've been part of a theater company family like this in so long. What Sixty Eight really means to me is always going to be community. I mean, I owe my creative development to being there. This company. It's a great place to be on Monday night. I don't know where else I'd want to be. Theater 68 means to me, it's a place that I can just come and have fun. I think what Theater 68 means to me is just um, a community of people who support each other. Theater 68 means mostly community. Theater 68 allows me to be fearless. To me, Theater 68 means family, community, just a place that I get to go and hang out every week and get inspired by my peers. So I am thrilled and totally inspired. And I have to say, it's exceeded my expectations. Um, the people, the caliber of the people like, are amazing. I've got to completely reinvent myself. The mission statement really inspires me. Ronnie says, you know, that the soul bearing This is self. fantastic for me. I mean, the idea, this has helped reinvent me. Clever that, that, that your, your video is uh, is self-produced also. Yeah, it's it's a nice it's a nice example of our company and the love and the community that goes on every Monday night for our Monday Night Actors Gym, and the New York chapter produced it and uh, put it together. And it's really cool. It shows you the the camaraderie and and just the the the, the love between everybody and also the work we're doing. I, I'm very proud of it. I think it's cool. So you have you you have two locations in New York. I mean, New York. You have a location in New York, a theater company in New York, as well as is uh, Hollywood. Correct. That's right. We were at the Drama Bookshop for eight years. And sadly, when they lost their space, so did we. We ended up at another theater for a little while. Then we found a permanent home at Shetler Studios, and they just went out of business. So we will be once we're able to get back together again. We will find a new brick and mortar uh, home for sixty eight. But what, we've, what we know on, in LA and New York is that it's the people that make up the company and the brick and mortar is important and we need that. But honestly, it's like, we're still at it and we're gonna do it until, until somebody tells me I can't. And then yeah, someone did, can take over. <laughs> you know? what, about, what about in Hollywood? Do you have a location in Hollywood that you still have? We, or? we have a beautiful spot on uh, Lancashire Boulevard in North Hollywood. And uh, we have two beautiful theaters inside the building and we still have those. and. Uh, and so that's good, but you know, the, it's hard to make the rent, especially in this time when we're not permitted that's to be. Asking, we still have it. Um, and what about, is, is there a website about your company that people can learn more? 
uh, about things you're doing or? Sure, go ahead, Meg. Yes, um, our website is www.theater68.com. Um, once again, a reminder that we always spell theater the classy way with an R-E, um, but it does have a little bit about, it has links to our One Act Festival. It also has links to our bi-coastal monologue jam that we produced before this, where we all wrote pieces for each other and filmed them. Um, and yeah, if that is where you would go if you wanted to also donate to the company and assist us in keeping our doors open and learn a little bit about what we may have planned for the future. We're very fancy with the RE, very fancy. <laughs> and, and now I said, I said, told me about your Monday night gyms, that she really got a kick out of them. Uh, I see you want to share some information about the, the little, this little exercise. Sure. So um, Monday night gym is when we all get together and, and show our work. Uh, part of the evening is spent bringing up scenes and since we're on zoom we're doing more with monologues currently because scenes on zoom are complicated um and we um critique each other but we always start with i really liked your work um and then we go into what we felt could have been better so it's a, a very embracing environment working it's very supportive supportive very supportive we try to keep it supportive no right or wrong you know it's uh we're just helping each other. It, it holds the same principles and values it did the first night on February 14, 2001, when we had Monday Night Gym in my living room. Uh, who knew it would grow into this? But the same values and principles are exactly the same today, which I'm very proud of. How many people were at that first event? It was about eight of us, including Eva Longoria. She was a member at that time ah. and some other people. Um, so uh, it was early in, in, in you know, inception, but... Uh, and all it was was me calling around to a few friends going, hey, let's do some scene work. I'm dying to work. Let's, let's hold each other accountable. Let's uh, support each other while we're waiting for the phone to ring. You know? Well, you, you look like the phone, you, the phone always rings. You're working constantly from your bio. It's I've like- very blessed. I've been very blessed. But, I, but a lot of my, you know, a lot of my work has come from work that I've created. I really try to tell the company, this festival is an example of that. It's like, put your career in your own hands. Let's write, let's direct, let's produce. Many of the jobs I get was because of the last job I was on. They go, oh, hire Ronnie, he'll do it. You know, whatever it is. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So um, I realize how fortunate and blessed I am. It's not lost on me that I could still be, you know, on the streets of New Jersey delivering pizza, which is noble and not a problem. It's just not what I wanted to do. And so I know how lucky I am to do it. Yeah, but you're also, you're just, a, you're, you're a wonderful energy to work with, I'm sure. And, 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 and people like that. And, and besides being talented and gifted, uh, you know, you have the whole package going for you. And, and Well, I appreciate that. I, I have a few people I'd like you to call so you could tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll check in with you later on that. We'll, I'll, 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 I'll set them straight. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know about your Lenny Bruce piece. And uh, when I said it was interesting, I meant interesting in terms of the fact you wrote or produced it and did all all of this and then you wrote it. To, you didn't see it when I was there? You're the only New Yorker who didn't see it. What happened? Where were you? I think I was playing Truman Capote in Jacksonville, Florida in Jay Preston Allen's play called True, which I did. Well, that's, that's a good excuse. That's awesome. <laughs> now, it was fun in New York, and who knows if I'll come back uh, at some point. We signed with uh, Columbia Artists uh, to do a national tour, and so we're working on the tour now. We're going to go back to Chicago for a while once it's safe, but uh, I'm just getting started. I'm loving this piece, and uh, I'm very lucky. So. Well, the love for your work certainly shows, and uh, I, it, it uh, spreads to the people you work with, I'm sure. And yeah. stay safe and well, everyone. Best of luck with your with your f festival, uh, and I hope a lot of people get to view the work. Thank, Thank you, guys. You Thank you. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Yeah.